righty. Well, we're here today um, with uh, John Allman, the street commissioner. We're, John, we're getting ready to kick off the uh, another uh, bunch of projects here. Uh, oh, yeah. We're about uh, uh, right here at the first part of April. So uh, standing behind us or sitting behind us is uh, some new equipment, and I want to talk a little bit about that and maybe talk a little bit about what we're planning to do this year as we uh, move forward. So uh, talk a little bit about this equipment and uh, what it means for the department to, to have it. It's obviously brand new. We're, brand so new. we're showcasing it yeah. today. So yeah. tell us a little bit. I'll let you hold it just to make it easy for you. Can brand, new, brand new equipment You know, is always efficient for the department. We're, we're going to have two of these. The one is new. The other one is we had before, but we need them both. Um, it'll be more efficient for paving, for sure. And we're going to do a lot of paving. And we want to talk a little bit about the, the Bobcat and these three attachments that you have here. Tell, yep. tell the folks a little bit about what each one does and uh, what we're going to be okay, doing. Okay, the, uh, the milling attachment is what we use in paving streets. We have to mill before we can pave. That takes your pavement down so that everything is even and level. Then you have the broom, which you can use on any street. Pick up millings when we're done, and you can use it on a regular street, you know, to pick up dust, dirt. And then you have your bucket, obviously is used for loading and unloading and all that. So it's gonna be gonna be really nice. It's the best I've seen in here. Well, you know, John, we just uh, the other day announced we're gonna do about 44, 45 uh, separate projects this year. Uh, some of that will be contracted out, but a lot of it's gonna be done uh, here in-house. So. Uh, a lot of this equipment will be able to be used for that. Uh, tell us now on the, on the milling, uh, a lot of folks probably don't understand, how, about how far down do you go when you mill the road before you lay the new pavement? You know, it just depends on the street itself. No more than three inches usually, but sometimes you don't have to go that deep. You just have to make sure you get everything level when you start. So if you have to go down a little bit to get it level, that's what you do. Now, the, the equipment, and I know uh, earlier our Anderson TV folks were taking some inside pictures of it, uh, it it's really a, a lot more uh, high-tech than, oh, yeah. than years ago. Yeah. A lot of electronics and stuff. What Tell me about, uh, like in terms of operators, uh, how many operators will we have that will be able to be trained to, to work on that piece of equipment? Oh, we've got, I'm guessing, six, seven operators that we can use at any time. Because they're all, they've, they're all, They've done the other Bobcat, they've milled, they've done all the other things, so and this one will be a lot simpler, so we've got guys to do it. Well, we appreciate everything you guys are doing. The street department uh, does a lot of great work here in the city and helps keep uh, our community looking good and keep our roads safe. And so we look forward to seeing you guys out there, and we'll certainly be careful when we drive down the road and keep it safe for them. So okay. thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. everything you do. No problem. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, I'm with uh, Steve Turner. Steve uh, with the street department, uh, foreman out here. Steve, tell us a little bit. I was talking to John a few moments ago, and we were talking about some of this new equipment. Uh, obviously, part of what you do is uh, supervise and make sure our street projects get done and this year we've announced 44 45 different projects some will be done by uh, contractors but a lot of it's going to be done in-house this year so tell us a little bit about what this equipment's going to mean for you and the, and the guys uh, working on this project all right it's going to make it's going to make a big difference for us uh, it's going to make our life a lot easier we're going to be more efficient uh, with this new equipment we got a, a bigger planer head uh, that we can actually do concrete and asphalt with now so that's going to make things a, a lot easier like i said more efficient and it's just going to make things uh, we just we're going to be able to get through things a lot easier okay uh tell me about uh to tell us a little bit about the milling and the the uh the work that you guys have to do to prep a road before uh before it gets paved a lot of times people see the the roads and they wonder why don't they just go out there and pave it but what, what do you have to do to prep those roads uh as far as prepping we have, we've got to go out and uh we have to assess the road, see what the what, things that we have to repair first, and then we mill uh, what we actually plane from where, from one stop from one point to the other. And when planing means uh, just taking the top two inches off at a at a at one point where you want to butt up to the uh, existing good asphalt, and we butt up to that. And it's you actually have to come out to see it to, for, for for you to understand what we're doing. And we just lay down two inches, and then when we get to the other end. Because we've milled there, we can butt up and it'll be a smooth transition from one road to the other. 
You know, one of the things I might ask you about, because I know a lot of folks uh, this time of year, of course, we're here in the first part of April, and we're getting ready to be able to do regular paving with regular asphalt now, but a lot of folks call us and ask about the potholes. Uh, you might talk a little bit and explain to folks the difference between what we do with our cold patch and, the, and then what we do with asphalt and why there's a difference and why sometimes that cold patch doesn't stay in there. Well, yeah, cold patch is just a temporary patch. It's just to get you through the winter. And so it's going to come out. It's just it's just what it does. But once you get hot mix with, with asphalt, that's a permanent fix. Uh, what happens with cold mix is once it rains, the surface, the groundwater will tend to come up, and it'll just push the cold mix out. And uh, and the asphalt, the the the, uh, the obviously the hot mix, the asphalt, uh, that's not available all year long, right? No, it's not. Uh, they were usually shut off anywhere from uh, November first until depending on the weather, if it breaks until March 1st. And I guess that's just all part of uh, enjoying the four seasons of Indiana, right? Absolutely. You just never know here. Okay. Well, listen, we appreciate everything you do and all the guys. We know you put in a lot of time and a lot of effort, and you do a great job. And we look forward to, to seeing the progress as we move forward this year. Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, sir. Thank you. trails with Tom Tackett. Tom is our uh, our maintenance supervisor, uh, superintendent out here for the Anderson Park Department. And, and uh, Tom, we've got a new piece of equipment uh, here. Now, as you know, this year uh, we're getting ready to start uh, some maintenance of our trails. We talked about it last year. We, we paved two and a half miles around Shadyside. We're getting ready to pave some more trails uh, out here. Tell us a little bit about the length of our trail system here in Anderson uh, and what we're going to do this year to, to try to maintain it and do, do some things that haven't been done in years, quite frankly. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the trail system in Anderson, uh, the length of it is uh, right at 9.6 miles uh, from east to west, uh, different lengths and different segments. Uh, this year, we've, we want to put together and we have put together a trail maintenance crew to help us uh, maintain the trails uh, better and more and more often. Uh, we've brought on two men, um, Terrence Graves and Ricky Legel. Uh, I've asked for them specially. They worked for me before. Uh, I believe they'll be a good asset to our trail system. There are times when we'll have to add more men and more equipment depending upon uh, the job and any damage that, that occurs uh, during the season. But I think they'll they'll do real well. What we want to do here is, is uh, Every day, will these two men, at least these two men, and the equipment will be on the trail system for that whole length of the trail. Uh, we want to clear out a lot of the honeysuckle um, and other debris that's along the trail that encroaches the trail itself. Try to get more of a berm area, three to five feet at least, open area on each side of the trail so it's not enclosed, so people don't feel entrapped on the trail system. And it gives it a much uh, better view and, and, a, and a cleaner path. Um, and so that's our, our attempt. I know once in a while folks will ask, well, why did you clear certain areas out? And, and, and part of it's safety. Uh, I mean, you have to be careful. Uh, a lot of these trails are tucked away in areas that uh, people can't see you, and uh, folks enjoy the nature, but at the same time, we want to make sure that it's safe for folks to feel comfortable bringing their family or being by themselves if they're out jogging or riding or whatever. Is that part of it? Yes, that's a big part of it. And when we cleared out Shady Side Lakes and paved that 2.5 miles or 2.6 miles around those lakes. We started that, uh, clearing out those banks and uh, notching out between the trees and everything. And, and we are, we're gonna pick back up on that on the west side this year with this trail crew. So now uh, you can see across the lake side, you know, from one side of the trail to the other and people are gonna feel a lot more safe. That's a big part of it. 
One of the things I know we all talked about last year when we were out there clearing that off, that, that uh, takes a lot of work and a lot of manpower to, to clear out that, those areas and the machinery and equipment. You want to make sure your equipment is also safe because you're, you're cutting a lot of debris and a lot of uh, branches and so forth that are, what, one and a half inches or more thick. Or more. Yeah. And uh, you can start throwing that around and can really can cause some damage. So we've gotten a new piece of equipment. Let's talk a little bit about that and tell us how that's going to help uh, make everything a little bit not just safe, but also how it's going to be able to help clear out some of these areas and, and keep them well maintained. Yes, we've brought on a new piece of equipment thanks to the mayor and uh, the assistant mayor. Um, we, we, it's a Ventrec unit. This is the most up-to-date and newest type of machinery of its kind. Uh, there has been an older piece of equipment over the years, but this is the newest. This Ventrec um, has eight tires on it and it's a, the, the dual concept, so it's very, very stable. It'll do flat surfaces, it'll go straight up and down our levee system. You could traverse the levee system with this and mow out either rough cut or finish. This has a, what is called a tough deck, tough cut deck or rough cut on it right now. So this would be the preliminary cut for us to go through the, the trail system on the berms and cut the honeysuckle that is anywhere up to an inch and a half in, in thickness or diameter. We'll get the rough cut down and then we can come back with the finished deck that goes on this also. What's good about this too is it's safe. Um, we've had mow trims, for example, out on the, on the trail system, but it's very dangerous. The trajectory of what that would throw as far as the debris uh, was very dangerous. This, when it cuts it, will mulch it down and it'll, it'll stay down on the ground. So we're not gonna have debris flying all over the place and, and, uh, and endangering the, uh, the pedestrians as they're walking on the trail. But there's a lot of this to do along the berm, so this machine is going to be heavily used and this ought to, ought to do the trick for us. Appreciate uh, you guys uh, willing to do what you're doing. Tell us your name. Uh, I'm Terrence Graves. Okay, Terrence. Rick Legel. Okay, Rick. Well, Terrence and Rick, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, I know in the past you've worked uh, with, with Tom, uh, but you've obviously seen this uh, new piece of equipment, and we talked a little bit off camera a while ago about some of the things you think you're going to be able to do. Uh, tell us about uh, what you're looking forward to here. Um, just mostly looking forward to cleaning up the trail so it could be a safe environment for everybody to walk or run in, so just making sure everything looks good. Okay, well, we certainly appreciate it. And uh, for yourself, uh, what, what are you thinking about as you look at this new piece of equipment and what we're going to be able to do with it? Uh, I think it's going to be really awesome. I think it's going to be able to do the job that we needed to do, and I think it's going to be used in a good way, and I think we'll be fine. All righty. Well, listen, I appreciate uh, what you guys are going to do for us this year. And Tom, as always, thank you for all the hard work you put forward uh, with the park department in general and the maintenance, of course. Uh, there's a lot to maintain here. And what we'll do is go ahead and uh, get somebody on this here in a minute and demonstrate it. And, okay. and then we'll get going down the trail. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you again. Sir. Bye. Yeah, thank you.
All right, I'm out here today uh, with Willie DeHart. Uh, how you doing, Willie? Great, Mayor. How are you? Okay. Hey, you are the uh, the foreman uh, here at the street department. Is that right? Yes. Tell the folks a little bit about what your duties are. Um, what we do out here uh, in my my area is uh, do a lot of the mowing of the lots. I think we did 1,200 lots last year. Um, try to keep the lawns down, uh, um, all the right of ways, stuff like that. Um, we make sure, try to get it to where it looks nice and is an all overgrown uh, uh, vacant lot, stuff like that. And so as far as the, the lots are concerned, some of those are city owned and some of those are uh, lots that uh, have been abandoned. And so we try to keep the weeds down in order to, to keep down mosquitoes and other, uh, other things that are really not uh, conducive to having a good neighborhood. Is that right? Yes, the varmints and the mosquitoes, all that stuff. And right here behind us today, we have a, we bought two of these, and this is a one that the street department's going to use, the other we had at the parks, and this is going to be used by your guys. Tell a little bit about how many folks you're going to have working out there as we begin this project, and here we're today, I think April 12th or so, uh, we're going to start this project about when? Uh, we should be starting here within a week or so, trying to get this going. We'll have about 10 to 12 guys at all times out mowing, keeping the lawns down. This new addition is going to be great for us, um, help us be more efficient, get stuff. It'll get a little bit bigger uh, bigger stuff without having to get the big tractors, bush hog like that in there. This will take over where our little mowers can't get, but this is going to be a great addition to our being efficient with what we do out here. Well, listen, well, I appreciate what you do. And, uh, of course, our commissioner, uh, uh, John's over here somewhere. Where, where's John, Jared John Allman? And there he is standing in the background. And we appreciate everything that everybody at the street department does. You guys always do a great job. And, and uh, we know that our weather's finally breaking, and we'll be able to go ahead and uh, get out there and start getting some of these yards mowed and keep the weeds down this year. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.